गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम बैक डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई एम योर फिजिक्स प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर नागराज एक्सप्लेनिंग इंजीनियरिंग फिजिक्स फॉर कंप्यूटर साइंस एंड अलाइड ब्रांचेस सो राइट नो आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट सुपर कंडक्टर्स दिस इज द थर्ड वीडियो ऑन दिस टॉपिक सो इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो आई वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट मेजनर इफेक्ट एंड प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ सुपर कंडक्टर्स कम लेट एस प्रोसीड फॉर द सो वट एवर आई टीच टूडे इन दिस वीडियो यू कैन एक्सपेक्ट टू क्वेश्चन बहुत आर इक्वली इंपॉर्टेंट नंबर वन डिस्टिंग बिटवीन टाइप वन एंड टाइप टू सुपर conductors or classify the superconductors or explain the classification of superconductors that is one question another one most important explain the formation of cooper pairs and give an account of bcs theory or explain bcs theory or explain the superconductivity using bcs theory both are equally important you can expect them for 8 to 10 marks okay first i start with types of superconductors see this type is totally based upon what is called critical field in the previous video i was telling see the susceptibility is a negative in the case of superconductors and when you plot magnetization versus magnetic field intensity well magnetization is a negative what do you mean by negative magnetization see suppose if there is a specimen like this inside if you have magnetic dipoles aligned in this particular direction if you apply the magnetic field in the same direction what happens the dipole poles will start orienting in the opposite direction that means the direction will change there so dipole moment means magnetic dipole moment is opposite to the applied field so total magnetic dipole moment is called magnetization or called intensity of magnetization in total if this is a dipole direction or if this is a magnetic dipole orientation if i apply the magnetic field immediately it will reverse so dipoles are always orienting in the opposite direction the that is known as negative magnetization and this happens in case of diamagnets if you increase the external magnetic field opposite orientation keeps on increasing so negative magnetization keeps on increasing up to certain value afterwards it decreases and becomes zero the point where negative magnetization vanishes is called critical field dear students this is little bit confusing what is the speciality of superconductor superconductors are not only having zero resistivity they also have diamagnetic property i said so an exclusive property of diamagnets is nothing but negative magnetization so superconductors they will try to retain the negative magnetization that means they will try to retain the diamagnetic property up to certain extent so the dipoles will try to orient in the opposite direction till some extent but one stage at one stage dipoles cannot fight against the external magnetic field so they also start orienting in the same direction the moment they start orienting in the same direction what happens it is nothing but para magnet so in para magnet dipoles are in the direction of the magnetic field in diamagnet they are in the opposite direction so negative magnetization keeps on increasing that means superconductor will try to retain its diamagnetic property but beyond it see it cannot it will surrender so therefore i call this portion as superconducting part this as normal conducting part so this is very important graph it is graph of negative magnetization versus critical field so with the help of this graph, i am going to explain the type 1 and type 2 superconductors so you need not have to explain this graph in the beginning itself so you, when when for, for example if the question is distinguish between type 1 and type 2 superconductors you can go ahead from here onwards see whatever i explained so far is actually type 1 superconductor so please recall my previous two videos critical temperature isotopic effect meissner effect critical field all these things whatever i explained are for type 1 superconductors only well then what is the type 2 superconductor what is the difference between type 1 and type 2 question to superconductor this question will come to your mind so without much delay i will give you the definition see So if superconductor is having only one critical field then it is called type 1 superconductor if there are two critical fields then it is called type 2 superconductor sir what sir is it possible to have two two critical fields does it mean that superconductor
reactor will lose its property twice no it is not like that there is a difference i will explain it first i am giving only the definition if there is only one critical field it is type 1 superconductor if there are two critical fields it is called type 2 superconductor see type 1 superconductor is like this for example aluminium aluminium up to zero tesla sorry from zero tesla to yesterday i told you know from zero tesla to 0.01 tesla it will be in superconducting form if you apply the magnetic field beyond 0.01 tesla it will convert into normal conducting form so aluminium is a type 1 superconductor well in aluminium if i take a piece of aluminium if the applied field is applied field is less than critical field then the magnetic lines will be going like this this is what is known as meissner effect lines cannot enter into the specimen so type 1 superconductors exhibit perfect meissner effect understood next in type 1 superconductors magnetic field critical magnetic field is very very small 0 0.01 tesla therefore we also call them as soft superconductors soft is not that they are physically soft soft in terms of the magnetic field value that means they cannot sustain huge magnetic field they will surrender to a smaller value therefore they are called as soft okay they are soft by nature in terms of magnetic field hence we cannot use them to store magnetic field Dear students, this is one of the application of the superconductor. Superconductors are no use huge magnets are no We can use those magnets to lift the train. You might have heard of maglevs, magnetically elevated vehicle. Anta train gulo, Germany, Japan, France, lela already ida ve. So you magnetic trains you that whole train we can lift with the help of superconducting magnet. That I will try to explain in the application part. But anyway, for computer science branches, this maglev application is not mentioned in the syllabus okay just only for the sake of additional information i will try to give at the end well back to this right now i am talking only about type 1 superconductor type 1 superconductor is one in which there is only one critical field and the magnetization versus h is like this there is only one critical field and in type 1 superconductor, there is a perfect Meissner effect. All the magnetic lines will be expelled below critical field. And because their magnetic HC, critical field is very, very small, they are also called as soft superconductors. Because of that, they cannot be used for constructive purpose. They are, cannot be used to build huge magnets. Okay. So, this is about type 1 superconductor. Now comes type 2. If I explain type 2, then you can make out the difference between type Type 1 and type 2. So now it is a type 2 superconductor. So this is a type 1 this is type 2 in type 2 superconductors as i told in the beginning there are two critical fields the graph of minus m versus h is like this as magnetic field increases this negative magnetization also increases but it won't increase further it starts decreasing but it won't decrease suddenly if it decreases suddenly then it is type 1 only the decreasing tendency starts here decreasing tendency starts here continues to decrease and after a huge value of h a very large value of h that negative magnetization becomes zero so the point where the decreasing tendency starts is called as critical field number one the point where it finally vanishes is called critical number two critical field value two so this way there are two critical fields in the case of type 2 superconductors so now you got the answer that means superconducting property is not vanished once for all like in superconductor 1 type 1 only vanish adange abrupt agi vanish agalla illi it is a gradual vanishing so in type 2 superconductor decrease in the tendency starts as a decreasing tendency starts at hc1 
and then finally it becomes a zero at a very large value hc2 is very much greater than hc1 hc1 is about 0 0.0102 like that hc2 is very very high for example we have niobium tin having hc2 value around 24.5 tesla look at 24.5 tesla whereas this one is 0 0.01 tesla so point compared to 0 0.01 this is more than 2000 times okay 2000 times more similarly in case of niobium and titanium it is around 15.6 tesla so in case of type 2 superconductors hc2 value is very high because hc2 value is very high we call them as hard superconductors got it and because they are able to hold huge magnetic field we can can use them to build permanent magnets permanent magnets right so type 1 cannot be used to construct permanent magnets whereas type 2 can be used to construct permanent magnets and from 0 to hc1 it is perfect superconductor above hc2 above hc2 it is perfect normal conductor it is perfect normal conductor what about between HC1 and HC2? Dear students, follow carefully. From 0 to HC1, type 1, sorry, type 1, type 2, both are same. From 0 to HC1, type 1 and type 2, both are same. Their behaviors are same. Beyond HC2, also they both are same. Okay, only from HC1 to HC2, this portion is there, no? This is the speciality of type 2. Well, from 0 to HC1, it is perfect superconductor. From HC2 onwards, it is perfect normal conductor. What about from HC1 to HC2? Follow carefully. It will be in the mixture. It is in the mixed state. It is partially superconducting, partially normal conducting. That means it is in both superconductor as well as normal conductor. What actually it is, I will explain now. Before that, I repeat. From 0 to HC1, that is from here to here, type 1 and type 2 both are same only in behavior wise. Similarly, HC2 onwards also type 1 is also normal conductor type 2 is also normal conductor only difference between hc1 and hc2 type 2 behaves slightly in a different manner what is the different manner it is actually called mixed state now i will explain what actually happens here for that let me take a superconducting slab instead of square sorry instead of circular disc i take a slab now okay this is one circular sorry rectangular slab of superconductor now do one thing apply the magnetic field when you apply the magnetic field initially yes definitely they will be thrown out so Meissner effect is happening okay but if you go above HC1 what happens you know some lines will try to enter the superconductor, not over the entire region. See, for example, this line is thrown out. Okay. This line may enter. This line is thrown out. This line may enter. So, magnetic lines slowly get into the specimen. This is my specimen. That means, between HC1 and HC2, Meissner effect is not perfectly happening. So, therefore, we can say type 2, so sorry, type 1 superconductor, perfect Meissner effect they exhibit. Whereas in type 2, there is no perfect Meissner effect. When the field is greater than HC1, these magnetic lines slowly they start entering. They slowly start entering. Once they start entering, at least that portion is no more a diamagnetic portion. If it is not a diamagnetic portion, we cannot call it as a 
this perfect superconductor but but in this region it is a diamagnet only and whether magnetic lines enter or don't enter still resistivity is zero nodi nanu indina video dal helidini in order to call a material as superconductor two important properties we have to look for number 1 diamagnetic nature number 2 zero resistivity here what is happening when h is greater than hc1 in case of type 2 magnetic lines are managing to enter into the specimen if not over the entire surface at least in smaller regions we call them as a filaments dharad tara thurkond hogtave they try to penetrate through the specimen that way the diamagnetic property is disturbed but still superconductor is able to retain its zero resistance property so in terms of resistance it is superconductor in terms of diamagnetic nature it is not superconductor that is why i called it as mixed state okay so between hc when h is greater than hc1 this is going to happen you keep on increasing this then some lines here also will start enter here also will start enter here also will start enter and finally a stage will come when h is equal to hc2 all the lines will enter in now the zero resistivity also vanishes now it converts into normal conductor so from zero to hc1 perfect superconductor type 1 tarane from hc1 to hc2 mixture diamagnetic property vanishes zero resistivity still exist hc2 onwards diamagnetic property also vanishes zero resistivity also vanishes so this is about type 1 and type 2 superconductors well now let me summarize this is a very important question you can identify about 6 to 7 differences number 1 type 1 they have only one critical field type 2 they have two critical fields Type one only HC one is very very small. HC two very very high, about thousand to ten thousand times high in some cases. And type one because critical field is very small, they are called as soft superconductors. Type two are called hard superconductors. Type one exhibit perfect Meissner effect. Type two do not exhibit perfect Meissner effect. Type one exist only in two states, namely superconducting and normal conducting. Whereas type two exist in three K states, superconducting. mixture as well as normal conducting so in case of mixed state it is partially superconductor because zero resistance exist but diamagnetic nature does not exist okay so graph this graph also can be taken as one difference minus m versus h is as follows so that's all about type 1 and type 2 dear students you better give examples also so i have given the niobium strontium so niobium and tin and niobium and titanium with the corresponding hc2 values and aluminium corresponding hc1 value that is 0.01 tesla so well that's all about type 1 and type 2 superconductors so please follow this carefully this is a one of the expected question for the main exam okay well with this now i move on to what is called bcs theory okay now it is bcs theory bcs theory stands for bernin Cooper and Schiffer. B for Bernin, C for Cooper, S for Schiffer. These three physicists gave this theory, and in fact, for this theory, they got even Nobel Prize also. Okay, Kemmerling one has got the Nobel Prize, Meissner effect, Meissner got the Nobel Prize, even BCS. These three physicists also got the Nobel Prize. I told you know already about three to four Nobel Prizes are awarded in the field of superconductivity. Well, what is this BCS theory? How it is going to explain superconducting property, dear students? i tell you this theory explanation of this theory is not that simple it is not possible to explain without any equations and that to higher level mathematics is required higher level quantum mechanics knowledge is required but i will try my level best to make it as simple as possible as understandable as possible for your level at your level and whatever the physics you know i make use of only that much to explain this cooper pair formation and bcs theory okay so i just mean said cooper pair what is cooper pair cooper pair see very first sentence itself is very confusing what is that cooper pair what is cooper pair cooper pair is a combination of two electrons cooper pair is a pair of two electrons okay what is confusing here it is pair of two electrons wait 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 next part how cooper pair is formed cooper pairs are formed when two electrons at 
attract each other. Don't you find something fishy here? Yes, sir. Our PU teacher, our high school teacher told two electrons never attract. Yes, I am also telling the same thing. Two electrons never attract because they are negatively charged particles. Like charges repel, unlike charges attract. Similarly, like poles repel, unlike poles attract. But I am still going ahead with the same sentence. When one electron is attracted by another electron, they form a bonding between them. This overall combination is called Cooper pair. What is this, sir? You are telling it is not possible to attract two electrons. At the same time, you are telling it is possible to make the pair out of attraction. How do you account for this? Well, I will try my level best to explain how it is possible to make two electrons stay together. I am not telling that electrons are getting attracted. It appears to be attracted. My final intention is to make two electrons to stay together. When they stay together, when they move together, when they go to look it together, it appears as if they are bonded together. It appears as if they are attracted together. So that situation is arising in case of superconductor. How it arises, what condition required and okay if Cooper pair is formed, how it is able to explain the zero resistivity and other things. Let us try to understand. Now, try to follow this example. I take two bar magnets. This is one bar magnet. This is another bar magnet. Assume that this is north pole. This is north pole. When I bring them very close to each other, what will happen? Sir, it is obvious they repel. Yes, they repel. North, north, repel. Okay, I bring south, south. What happens? Same thing will happen, sir. North, north, south, south. They are like poles. They repel. Okay, now what will happen? Yes, you are correct. They will attract and they stick together. All right. So, so that means they are forming the pair. There is no wonder in this. It is the nature law. This is the law of nature. Unlike poles attract, like poles repel. But I want to break this. I want to attract. I want to join them together. How to do that? I want this south pole and sorry, north pole and north pole stay together and move together like this. Okay. How to do that? Can we do it? Is it possible? Can you think of a sort of correlated motion? This is called correlated motion. When this is going up, this also should go up. This also should go up. This should, both of them come down. When they are going right side, they should both right side, left side, both left side like that. This is called correlated motion. Understanding, mutual understanding, well understanding between them. How to do that? Yes, there is a possibility. Now do one thing. Take a sheet of iron. Take a sheet of iron. Now bring this magnet's north pole here. What happened? Sir, iron sheet gets stuck to the magnet. Yes, you are correct. Iron sheet gets stuck to the magnet like this. Wait. Okay. So this is iron sheet. This is iron sheet. And when I bring the iron sheet very close to the bar magnet, the north pole gets stuck to it. So now it is this way. Okay. So it is like this. Right. So iron P, iron sheet is now attached to my bar magnets north pole. Next what I will do, keeping this here, I bring another magnets north pole this side. When I bring another magnet this side, what will happen? That also gets stuck to the sheet. Right? So, here this side is getting stuck to the sheet not because that is north pole. It is not at all feeling north pole. It is feeling the iron. Are you getting my point? So I have a sheet of iron over here. From this side I bring north pole of the bar magnet. From this side also I bring north pole of the magnet. They both will get stuck to the iron sheet. Not from the same side but from the opposite side. Okay. So like this. Now if I move this one, this also will move. If I move that one, this also will move. That is possible only if the sheet, this paper I am treating as iron sheet. So if the sheet is cooperating, then both the ends will move together. So I can bring about what is called that correlated motion. Did you understand? So that means I am trying to establish a sort of attraction. I am trying to bring them together. I am trying to keep them together with the help of iron sheet. Without mediator, this fellow is a mediator. Iron sheet is the mediator. He mediator illa antandre. Iveradu hing nillo de illa. They won't stay like this at all. I need his mediator's help. Without mediator, they fly apart. With mediator, they will try to stay together. This is in the case of bar magnet. In the case of magnetic field. So, attraction between two like poles. 
still still it is not attraction i managed to keep the two poles intact intact okay now coming to electron see already in one of my video i mentioned in the material we have what is called lattice plane in the lattice plane we have what is called positive charge let us say positive charges are sitting at the corners of the lattice plane okay now assume that one electron is moving towards the lattice plane so this is my lattice plane this is my lattice plane positive 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 one electron is moving towards the lattice plane what will happen because of the electrons negative charge as it comes here this positive will move little bit this positive will move little bit this positive will move little bit this also will move little bit that means there is a sort of attraction say this is my lattice plane right this is one positive charge when electron arise here electron is negative this is positive so there is attraction so this positive will come here similarly this positive will come here this positive will come here this positive will come here yes i know already some questions are raised in your mind sir why positive is coming here why electron is not going that side i have answer for that wait just for another one or two minutes so time being you just take it for granted that only positive are moving now the lattice uh, sorry the positive charge is distributed i am not telling that lattice size is shrinking lattice size is chikkadagodilla ಇದ್ದಂಥ ಪಾಸಿಟಿವ್ ಚಾರ್ಜ್ ನೋಡಿ ಇಲ್ಲಿದ್ದಂತ ಪಾಸಿಟಿವ್ ಚಾರ್ಜ್ ಇಲ್ಲಿಗೆ ಬರ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಸೊ ಆಸ್ ಎ ರಿಸಲ್ಟ್ ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ದ ಚಾರ್ಜ್ ವಾಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಟೆಡ್ ಓವರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮಚ್ ಏರಿಯಾ ನೌ ದ ಚಾರ್ಜ್ ಈಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಟೆಡ್ ಓವರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮಚ್ ಏರಿಯಾ ಕಮ್ ಆನ್ ಟೆಲ್ ಮಿ ವೆದರ್ ಚಾರ್ಜ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ರೀಸ್ಡ್ ನೋ ವೆದರ್ ಚಾರ್ಜ್ ಡೆನ್ಸಿಟಿ ಇನ್ಕ್ರೀಸ್ಡ್ ಎಸ್ how what is charge density charge density is nothing but q divided by surface area earlier this was the surface area now this is the surface area surface area decreases charge density increases so what i mean to say when electron move towards the lattice it will pull all the positive charges this is called polarization of the charges as a result charge density in increases what type of charge density positive charge density increases okay so i am not at all telling that positive charge is increasing agode illa charges ashte irute four charges only will be there charge density will increase got it okay so all the charges are now polarized crowded as a result charge density increases okay then electron is here meanwhile okay now now my electron is here and there is lot of positive charge density in this region lot of positive charge density now meanwhile another electron coming from this side another electron coming from this side will see the positive cloud so iga ee kade inda one electron hogta ide ankoli it will see the positive charge cloud so what happens this electron also gets attracted by the cloud so from that side electron is coming from this side electron is going this electron created the positive cloud here and because of that this electron will stop here already this electron has stopped here this also will stop here and this electron will lose energy to the lattice this electron will lose energy to the lattice so as a result there arises a sort of bonding between the electrons but but without the help of lattice it is not possible here the lattice is the mediator lattice must cooperate lattice positive ions must cooperate they must be flexible they must be flexible they must be able to move towards electron you asked a question now why positive charge is moving why not electron in a material if positive charge is not flexible if the lattice is not flexible if the lattice vibrations are not too much suddenly cooper pair will not be formed and the positive charge aakade hogangirbeku electron e hogangirbardu anta material idre matra idu agutte so okay only if in a material lattice vibrations are large 
lattice is cooperating then positive charges will move towards each other as a result cloud increases electron stays there another electron also will stay there now because of the attraction electron will lose energy I hope you following now. I repeat once again what is happening. I repeat in brief once again. When electron is coming this side, it will pull all the positive charges. As a result, positive cloud increases, density increases. So, electron will stop there. From the other side, when another electron is coming, it will also stop there. So, both the electrons will give their energy to the lattice. That's why this lattice is vibrating. Come on, tell me, lattice vibration is associated with what type of particle in my first video? video I have mentioned yes sir it is nothing but phonon yeah that is the reason why I explained phonon concept in detail in my first video electron electron lattice when two electrons arrive at the lattice they give their energy in a discrete manner each time they give some definite amount of energy in terms of particle that is called phonon so you can say you do whatever I explain this is for understanding see my teacher teaching is like this first I will try to explain the concept so that you can understand now you can put it in your own words so concept and artha mods of the nana teaching answer and a new way but you know there are see what is the answer how Cooper pairs are formed how Cooper pairs are formed yeah like this when electron moves near the lattice it will attract all the positive power charges as a result charge density increases and electron will lose its energy to the lattice Meanwhile, another electron moving in the opposite direction, it will also get attracted by the lattice and loses the energy. Both the electrons, because they are losing energy, they stay together. And the energy lost by them is in a discrete manner that is called phonon. So, when two electrons lose their energy, they stay together. Okay, always remember when there is attraction, energy is less. When there is repulsion, energy is more. This is what you studied even in electrostatics also. Higher potential energy means repulsion. Lower potential energy or negative potential energy means attraction. Okay, illu kuda adhe agadu. Yerade electrons bantu, lattice ke energy anna kut bittu, avu alle nint kondi da ve. They are staying there. So, this is now called Cooper pair. This is what I mentioned. So, between these two, we have what is called lattice plane. In lattice plane, positive ions should vibrate. If they refuse to vibrate, if the lattice plane does not cooperate, if it won't cooperate, Cooper pair will not be formed at all. When the Cooper pair is not formed, there will be no superconducting property. Okay. See, this is the reason why you cannot convert copper into superconductor, iron into superconductor. Even though iron and copper are very good conductors, they never become superconductors because the lattice is not vibrating. Lattice is very rigid. For us, the lattice must be flexible. The atoms are not going to be rigid. The lattice is not going to be rigid. The lattice is not going to be rigid. The electron is not going to be rigid. So, therefore, they never become superconductors. Okay, okay, coming back to this Cooper pair. So, now you know what is Cooper pair. It is a combination of two electrons. How it is formed? With the help of lattice plane. What actually happens? When electron arrives here, all the positive charges will be crowded, density increases, so electrons get attracted. And therefore, there arises a sort of virtual bonding between them. Okay. And this is a low temperature phenomena. In order to break this bonding, we have to supply some energy that is called energy gap. It is possible to prove that it is 3.5 Kb into Tc, where Kb stands for Boltzmann constant, Tc is critical temperature okay so tc if you substitute it comes out to be for like uh, aluminium you substitute like a 1.15 mercury you substitute like 4.15 calculate energy gap so it is a very very small value that means cooper pairs exist only at lower temperature so why this is not happening in case of higher temperature where a normal temperature 
नार्मल टेम्परेचर इलेक्ट्रॉन बरते पुल दि पॉजिटिव चार्जस् बट थर्मल एनर्जी विल पुष् दि एलेक्ट्रॉन फारवर्ड इट के नाट स्टे दे सो दट ईज रीजन वै अट नार्मल टेम्परेचर आर हय्यर टेम्परेचर्स एलेक्ट्रॉन्स के नाट फारम देर पेर ओके सो दिस वन पॉइंट रिगार्डिंग द कूपर पेर सेकेंड थिंग दिस इज आलो क्वैट इंपारटेंट वन वन कूपर पेर इज फार ओके विथ इन नो टेम आल अदर एलेक्ट्रॉन्स विल फॉलो दि सेम प्रोसिजर within no time within a fraction of second their number increases like anything okay over 10 power minus 6 meter of length within the specimen you will find billions of billions of cooper pairs and all the cooper pairs are identical all the cooper pairs are exactly same and if one cooper pair is moving like this or other cooper pairs also will move in the same direction this is called correlated motion so between each and every cooper pair there is a mutual understanding whether it is a cooper pair in the front row or in the back row they all have mutual understanding you might have seen birds flying in the sky so the front bird will be like this next we have next we have next we have like this uh, have you seen they have a beautiful arrangement and they come they make this arrangement without no time within no time sorry within no time suppose if the first bird deviates they all will deviate and they all will move in the same direction so this type of movement is known as correlated motion okay so i just try to explain what is cooper pair how it is for us what is the speciality of the cooper pair cooper pair no visheshata eno extraordinary property enappa andre correlated motion another speciality enappa andre nodi quantum mechanics alli now particle anna particle anta treat madala we never treat particle as a particle we treat particle as a wave and each Each wave is represented by what is called wave function. So one electron, one wave function. If there are two electrons, two different wave functions. If there are n electrons, n different wave functions. But here, even though there are n number of Cooper pairs, they all are represented by one wave function. That means all the Cooper pairs are behaving like single molecule, single particle. That is why we call that bunch of Cooper pair as macro molecule. ಕ್ಯೂಲ್ ಎಲ್ಲದಕ್ಕೂ ಇಲ್ಲೇನೆ ನಿಮಗೆ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಕಷ್ಟ ಅನ್ಸೋದು ಈ ವೇವ್ ಮತ್ತೆ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಬಂದಾಗ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಕನ್ಫ್ಯೂಸ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಈ ವೇವ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಅಂತ ತಕ್ಷಣ ನಮ್ಮ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಬೇರೆ ಕಡೆ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಹೊರಟೋಗ್ಬಿಡುತ್ತೆ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಇನ್ ಕ್ವಾಂಟಮ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಸಬ್ ಅಟಾಮಿಕ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ವೇವ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ವೇವ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ಇಫ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೇಮ್ ಟೈಪ್ ಆಫ್ ವೇವ್ ದೆನ್ ವಿ ಕಾಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಸ್ ಒನ್ ವೇವ್ ಫಂಕ್ಷನ್ ಸೊ ಕೂಪರ್ ಪೇರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಒನ್ ಸಿಂಗಲ್ ವೇವ್ ಫಂಕ್ಷನ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವೈ ಕೂಪರ್ ಪೇರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಮ್ಯಾಕ್ರೋ ಮಾಲಿಕ್ಯೂಲ್ಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಐ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನ್ ಹೌ ಕೂಪರ್ ಪೇರ್ ಈಸ್ ಫಾರ್ what is the speciality of the cooper pair that is correlated motion and why it is represented by one single wave function now the question is okay sir your intention is to explain superconducting property that means zero resisting property and diamagnetic property how cooper pair is able to account for those two specialities superconductor are two special property two important property anta helidini two important properties zero resistivity and diamagnetic property well i will explain how cooper pair can explain the zero resistance state of the substance and diamagnetic nature of the material that i take up in my next video so today in this video i just gave you the classification and the cooper pair formation so cooper pair formation is one of the beautiful concept very difficult to accept attraction between two electrons our mind will not power at, sorry my conscious will not permit at all but still it is true it is true only when temperature is very 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 small okay well i stop this video please like my video share the video subscribe to my channel and support me thank you thank you very much